Today I'm going to be etching aluminum with copper sulfate, salt, and water. I'm using a CNC cut vinyl mask. I'm getting about a one millimeter thickness in line, and anything that you can see that is aluminum or silver colored is going to be etched away. I'll be mixing up a small batch of copper sulfate etch. I'll be using 100 grams of copper sulfate and equally by weight 100 grams of salt. Table salt is fine. Our solution is 50-50 by weight. I'll put that in a container and mix that with 500 milliliters of hot water. You want to use the hot water so it'll help dissolve the crystals of the copper sulfate in the salt. That will be our concentrate. If you etch with this concentrated version, the metal will heat up quite a bit and it may actually get too hot to handle with your hands. Though you'll have rubber gloves on, it may be too hot to handle. So you can add another 500 milliliters of water if you like. First, I have to weigh out my portions of copper sulfate and salt. We're gonna be using a triple beam scale today. I'll show you how to add your container, zero that out, and weigh out 100 grams of both. Here's our triple beam scale. You can see we have one, two, and normally this would be our third beam. On this scale, it's actually in the form of a dial, but we'll still call this a triple beam scale. You can see in the back, it goes in steps of 10 grams, so 0, 10, 20, 30, until you get to 100. The central beam is in 100 grams, so 0 grams, 100 grams, up to 500 grams. And then the dial, the third beam, will go up in single grams, and actually you can see it's even smaller increments. This is a very accurate way to measure materials. I use this for mixing rubbers, plastics, and of course, dry chemicals. So before I begin, I need to make sure that the scale is weighed out at zero. I also need a container for mixing. Here I'm using a milk jug that's just been cut in half, and I'm gonna use that to mix my dry chemicals. So I need that to read zero, and right now it's too high. So with that container, those containers usually weigh cut in half about 30 grams. So I need to offset this about 30 grams. And the first place you can start is on the back. On the back, there's a little bolt you can turn. If you turn it counterclockwise, that is going to put more weight on the left side, making the scale pop up. So if I want to increase the weight over the zero, I need to turn this dial clockwise. So I turn it a few times and nothing. You can see that that's almost at zero now. You may have to give it several turns. And then once you get close, you're gonna to have to give it a couple more turns in smaller increments and let it settle to zero. Okay, we're about at zero and I can't turn this anymore and we're so close. Since I'm gonna be weighing 100 grams of salt and 100 grams of copper sulfate, I don't need to get down to the single grams. So I'm gonna also use my third beam to increase the weight so that I can get closer to zero. Let's turn that a little bit. That was about half a gram. Now you can see it's at zero. So now whatever we weigh, whatever additional contents we put on the scale is gonna be more than zero. It basically isn't recognized in our container. And since we want 100 grams of just our material, we don't want it to recognize our container. So make sure you have safety glasses, make sure that you have a dust mask or a respirator on. You're mixing dry chemicals and that can create a slight cloud of chemical. So make sure that you're working also in a well-ventilated area. Once you start etching your aluminum, it will be off-gassing and releasing chemicals into the air. So again, make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area with some form of respirator. Now that we're at zero, let's weigh some of our chemical. I'm going to start with the copper sulfate. 
If I want 100 grams of material and my scale is at zero, I set my scale to my desired weight, 100 grams, and you notice it goes way down. So now I have to put 100 grams of weight on the left side in order for that right side to come up. I have my scale set. Now I'm gonna start pouring in some of my copper sulfate and I'm gonna be pushing down on the scale as I do that because it's gonna be very easy to overflow your container. We only need 100 grams and that's not a lot of chemical. I'm gonna push down slightly on the scale to see how much pressure it takes for that right side to come up. And as I pour, I'm gonna to continue to do that. And it's really close at the end. I'm gonna get it close to the edge of the, the rim of the container and just let a little bit come out. It was literally like 10 crystals. So this scale is super accurate. And the mixture of this etch, if you're a little bit off, it's not gonna be the end of the world. If you're off a couple pinches of salt or of copper sulfate on a batch like this, it's gonna etch the same. Just try to get to that 100 grams. Try to be as accurate as possible, but you can get this on a digital scale as well. Now I'm gonna pour this into my mixing container. For a mixing container, I'm just going to use a detergent bottle with a tight lid or another one gallon water or milk jug. Now I'll do the same thing with my salt. It's getting close there. See how it takes longer, it doesn't fall right away. That's perfectly fine. Other reason I like using these gallon containers cut in half is the plastic is really thin. It allows you to funnel materials into other containers. And now we're done with the scale. As you can see, it's this beautiful blue-green color. As soon as you add your aluminum to the etch, it's gonna go from a blue-green color to a muddy green color to a gray type of color. Once it gets really dark gray, you know you're getting towards the end of the life of the etch. I like to work with trays, especially when I'm working with chemicals. This is a simple plastic tray, like a lunch tray. And in the back, I have a larger container, a larger, longer container, if I wanna etch pieces that are a little bit too big for these gallon containers that are cut in half. You can see on the left, I have some water. This is gonna be for rinsing our piece. As soon as we start to etch, there's gonna be this red material that starts to bubble off, and we wanna put that in our water and rinse it off. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what happens when this material dries up. So once you break that material up and it dries out, you can throw that in the trash. Don't pour this mixture in the grass or down your drain. It's gonna etch, it's going to kill plants, it's gonna kill trees. That's what copper sulfate is for if you buy it at the hardware store. It's called root kill. So it will damage property, it's not good for the environment, but they claim that if it dries out, you can throw that in a trash can as long as it's dry material. So I'm gonna throw that out. 
So I'm gonna pour my chemical in one container. And you see that color is pretty cool. Again, make sure you have gloves and safety glasses on. Work in a well-ventilated area. Clean your workstation off. You may also need to wear an apron. I'm gonna take my piece of aluminum that is masked with vinyl that I cut on the vinyl cutter. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in there. I'm gonna take my piece and submerge it. And right away you can see it start to cloud. You can see the aluminum surface start to darken. The etch starts to darken and you get all these bubbles that come up. So I would leave it in there for about a minute. But within seconds, you're gonna see some of the sludge start to lift up. There it is, this red sludge. So if that gets too thick, it's gonna block your exposed metal and it won't be able to keep etching. So make sure that you continually rinse that piece off. As it fizzes, those small tiny bubbles will start to form a foam. And the more, and the darker the mix gets, the bigger and sludgier that foam is going to get. So at this time, I'm going to take my piece out and put it in the rinse. You can see that our piece is steaming. That etch is, is uh, that etch is steaming, and you can see that red sludge building up. I'm gonna put it in our rinse. And you can see that dark gray oxidized color. And it's only etching where this piece is exposed. And you can put it back in. So you wanna keep these chemicals contained. Although this is a fairly safe way to etch, it's still toxic. You don't wanna ingest, you don't wanna get this stuff on your face and your skin and your eyes. Make sure you have water to rinse your eyes, know where the rinse station is. Make sure you're not dripping this stuff everywhere. Whatever spills you do make, make sure that you clean up and safely dispose of. You'll definitely see results within the first five minutes. We're currently at about three minutes. It's gonna be difficult to see the thickness of this edge until it starts to get really deep, and that may take up to a half an hour. If you're working in a facility that has carboys and a waste disposal system, make sure that you fill the carboy with this chemical, fill it out, write your name on there, put, put all the information on, and also make sure that the, the container is tightly closed in, in the hazmat container. If you're doing this from home, you can simply let this evaporate and those crystals can be put in the garbage. So our piece has been etching for a total of probably 12 minutes. And it's looking great, so I'm gonna keep it etching. So I'm gonna leave it in there for about another 20 minutes, and we'll come back and take a look. You'll have to come back and rinse in between. So make sure you pick the piece up every five, 10 minutes, uh, depending on how much aluminum's exposed, depending on how much that sludge is building up, and then make sure that you rinse that off. Let's take another look. So we've been going here for about 25 minutes, 20 minutes or so, and the vinyl is starting to peel up just a little bit on 
these sharp corners. So you need to be careful about how long you're leaving your etch in. I have about a half a millimeter etch, which is pretty, which is pretty significant. That's a pretty deep etch. So I could lay some powder coat down in there and sand those high spots. It's not very deep. You could be, you have to be careful not to scratch the powder coat down in there, but that's a pretty nice deep etch. So now you wanna make sure you rinse that fully. Take the vinyl off, let that dry out, throw it in the trash. Take care of all your chemicals. And I'm gonna take this over to the sink and wash it off with a toothbrush. And I'll bring it back. And my etch is pretty well spent. I don't know that I'm gonna get much more out of that. My stickers are definitely starting to peel up.